and welcome to the Jesse James Facebook page. I'm Gem Hawks. I'm here with you tonight with a beautiful bead box. This is one of the mini mixes in blue raspberry ice pop. So we're also going to be using some wire as is my way and I have some 18 gauge round copper wire and also some 26 gauge round copper wire. I'll show you in just a tick the project that we're going to make this evening for me, this afternoon, possibly for you, maybe even this morning, dependent on where you are in the world. So if we've not met before, I'm Jem, I'm from the United Kingdom and uh, I'm coming to you from the very middle of England, right slap bang in the centre. I hope you're having a beautiful day no matter what it is you're getting up to. Just saying hi to Tamara, Emily, hello, hello, good to have your company. I hope that you've had a fantastic day so far. So again, this is quite new technology for me and I hope that you'll bear with me if anything goes a tad awry this evening. I will do my absolute best. So the first thing I want to do is just give you a quick flick of the project that we're going to make this evening which is this piece do say hello hello Roberta good to see you hello Lois lovely to see you I hope you've had a fabulous day so far tell us what you've been up to and whereabouts you're from so this is what we're looking to make today which is the all heart drop butterfly pendant we're going to focus on this design to begin with and then I will show you how to make the butterfly at the bottom if you fancy joining that on. It's quite a grand elongated drop of a piece. Uh, but this is what we're going to focus on, which is the all heart with those beautiful little butterflies from the pot. So just really to say thank you for being with us. I hope you're having a beautiful time. Hello, Sherry. Good to see you. Thank you very much, Emily. That's very kind of you. So shall we just have a bit of a catch up? Sarah is in from Evergreen, Colorado, which I must admit my geography of Colorado is pretty dicey. I don't know where exactly about you are, my darling, but I do know that it looks beautiful on your terrace. So I hope you've had a good day. Shall we just talk a little bit more about the bead pot and then we can crack on in a few minutes so I chose to work with the blue raspberry ice pop which is a fabulous colorway there's gold the sparkle and there's several tones of blue let's pop back down to here and we'll take a slightly closer look at the bead box itself. There's such a fabulous array of goodies in here. These are a particular favourite of mine. I've not worked with them today because I'm saving them to make a pair of earrings. But everything in the pot is absolutely stunning. Not least of all these absolutely spectacular focal beads. So I'm going to swoosh those back out of the way and we'll take another look. My hand looks giant just then. Oh, giant hands. It's because we've worked on getting the desk set up a little bit clearer for you. So hopefully we've solved the zoom in and zoom out problem. And with any luck, things will be a little bit clearer for you. Let's have a look. Just north of Atlanta is Roberta, Lancaster, Ohio. My sister lives in Lancaster, United Kingdom. Where else? Stormy St. Paul. Wow. Okay. Sarah is laughing at my giant hand, which is obviously quite amusing because, you know, why wouldn't it be? Maria is in. Hello and good afternoon to you all. This is the project that we're looking at today and this is the mix that we're utilising. As I said earlier on, the wires that we're going to use today are very easily accessible. They're just round wire. In, I'm working with raw copper because it shows up against the white background ground really nicely hopefully we're a little bit better illuminated than we were last week we've also upped the quality of the photographic image so hopefully this will work we will see as we go i am sure so i don't think i'm going to stick around in the corner because all you'll see is the side of my face bobbing up and down as i do things so i think we'll just get cracking let's get on with our project so the materials hello 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 we have a lancaster in pennsylvania too wow 
let's have a look. Catherine, hello, welcome. Catherine, how are you, sweetheart? Oklahoma, oh, bless you. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. And Donna is here. Hello, sweet people. It's so good of you to join us. Thank you very much. So one thing I would say is that um, I'm getting a 10 second delay between my broadcast and what you see down here on the bench. So if I'm seeming a little bit disjointed, that would be why. Let's have a look at the wire that we're going to use to begin with. What I will do is just slide the piece over to the side and hopefully you'll still be able to see that. I just need to go sideways. I'm from Michigan, says Catherine. Let's just leave this bit in the view for the second because this is the first bit that we'll work on. I might knock it on the floor. Who knows? It's an exciting night. There we go. OK, so we're all lined up and ready to rock and roll. So what I've done is I've cut myself a couple of lengths of the round 18 gauge wire and all I've done, they're around about 15 inches and I've got two of those lengths. Every single time, let me just pop you back up here for one second. Every time I'm working with a wire, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my length. I've got two, they're about 15 inches and I'm going to grip hold of them at one end and then just run thumb and forefinger all the way along the length, maybe three, maybe four times. If there are any kinks, I will want to iron those out real quick. So just giving that a bit of a smooth over at the end. And once I've got both of them in this fashion, we're going to pop back down here and we're going to get cracking making this shape. So the first thing that I'm going to do is find the halfway point. I think I'm going to need to move this out the way because otherwise we'll not have quite enough space. I'm going to find the halfway point along the first of my two lengths of wire and I'm going to put a really nice sharp firm bend. doesn't matter if it's not exactly the same. What I've done with my piece actually is made the heart asymmetric. Now if you particularly want symmetry then you go for you. You do exactly what it is that you need to do to make yourself happy. I quite like having a jaunty angle to hang from and also having an asymmetric heart but you can do exactly as you prefer thank you very much for joining us uh, is that tempe arizona 110 degrees no i would most definitely be lying down with a fan i think uh, we don't tend to have a lot of air conditioning in this country so yes definitely a fan anyway i'm going to recreate this design with an asymmetric heart so do feel free as i say to change this up exactly how you want that to be so I've popped myself into uh, the centre of the wire and put a really strong angle down at the bottom. And what I will do is I will grab some round nose pliers and I'm going to start coiling in from the ends. Now this is a very large heart and the reason for that is it's easier to show you. If you want a smaller piece of jewellery at the end of the day, if you want to, it as wall decor then stick with the dimensions, but if you want to size that down for jewellery then obviously you can use slightly less wire. So I'm going to bring in the ends just here. Now obviously that's trickier to show you when we've set the camera up to be quite close. But I'm going to get that coil started. What I like to do with a design like this is start with a relatively tight coil. We'll get that moving around. I'll just pop those pliers out the way so they don't catch. And I'm just going to keep turning until I get a really nice round form going on. I'll do exactly the same on the other side to begin with so that I've got the beginnings of my heart shape going without too much stress. This is an accessible project for people who are relatively new to wire work. So again, I'm just going to start those first few coils around and I'm using my bent chain nose pliers, but equally you could use standard chain nose pliers if you prefer. I just happen to be in love with these particular pair. That's the ones that work best for me. As you get into wire work, you will probably find ones that you prefer also. So I'm going to continue turning until I've got a relatively equal sized coil on either end of that wire. Once I've got that going, I'll start moving it by hand. Now you do need a reasonable grip strength, which is why I'm using my good hand and not my bad hand. So my left hand is a little bit poorly with arthritis, so I tend to use that to guide things and use my dominant hand. I do just want that to be flat, so I'm going to give that a little squeeze like so. You may need to just give that a bit of a scooch until it sits neatly. 
So I've got the one side forming down and you'll see it's a lovely way to shape hearts because it kind of makes itself. So I'm allowing the coil to be quite open after those first central sections. I'm going to bring that down to quite a large heart. I think it probably needs to be a little bit smaller than that or we'll be here all week weaving that together. Now I started with a super sharp bend at the bottom because I like how that looks but when you're getting those coils into position you can absolutely move those around so that they sit how you want them to. So that to me actually looks pretty good and pretty much on the money for what I want to achieve. So I'm going to bring in now my second heart or my second wire that will become the heart. Again it's around about 15 inches of your 18 gauge round wire and I'm going to put a point right in the middle again and as I said earlier it doesn't have to be exactly symmetrical you'll probably see that one end is longer than the other but as I'm going for an asymmetrical design that's not really an issue. So what I'll do is just open that out once I've made the sharp defined bend at the bottom and I'm just going to lay them on the paper so that you can see them. What I'm looking to do here is have a point where they almost connect at the bottom but not quite and then the outer of the two wires, so we made a heart in the middle, at the moment the outside is just a V shape. So I don't know if you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask and I will do my best to answer them as we go through. What we're looking to do is to flare the V slightly wider. So I'm going to pop those pliers in and just open that up slightly. I want to have those points almost touching down at the bottom there, but then I want to have the shape flaring outwards. It's at this point that we're going to bring in a length of the finer gauge wire. Now I tend to work most predominantly with the 26 gauge, which is equivalent into 0.4 millimetres in the UK. Oh, thank you very much, Sarah. That's very kind of you. Oh, bless you, Lisa. That's really beautiful feedback and I appreciate it. I genuinely do. Thank you. So I've got now around about two foot, so 24 inches or 60 centimetres of the 26 gauge. If you've got strong fingers, you absolutely can do this design in the 24 gauge. It looks beautiful with 24 gauge. I happened to have run out and have some on order. So we will see when that arrives. What I'm going to do is I've, I've looked at that flare and I'm quite happy with how that's starting off. So what I will do is I'll just pop the outer V shape just out of the way for a second. I'm going to find the centre of my finer gauge wire and again this is 26 gauge around about two feet worth or two foot's worth how do you say that let's go with 24 inches what I'm going to do is come down to the heart point at the bottom and I'm going to wrap three times quite close to the base there and I'm just going to make sure that those coils are nice and neat and tidy if you don't care about your nails I certainly am not vain about my nails you can just scooch those up together if you do you can absolutely take a little extra time and just use the tips of your pliers to make that neat and tidy so the way we've wrapped the wire around obviously one is coming underneath so this side which is on the right if you can hear that paper noise I'm very sorry on the right hand side my finer gauge wire is underneath and on the left hand side where, as you're looking at it it's over the top so what we need to do is bring our outer V into shape and what I'm doing is I'm scooching the left hand side of that V underneath and the right hand side just pops over the top of the finer gauge wire and that's just so that we can line things up and see where we want that to sit we'll in fact swap that over in just a second what we will start to do now is an expanding figure of eight weave. Now that sounds really quite grand, but it isn't grand at all. So I'm just going to take that V back out and I'm going to swap that over. So the finer gauge wire is coming away from the coil on the left hand side. I'm just going to drop this V shape over the top and then I need to draw the right hand finer gauge wire that's coming from underneath the heart I'm going to take that over the top of that outer V now that sounds complicated but it's not what we're doing with any figure of eight weave is we are switching sides so let's just concentrate on the one half of that coil at the moment so hopefully you can see that reasonably clearly and it's centralized in shot thank you very much Emily that's very kind of you thank you so what we're going to do is take the tail, which is half of our length of finer gauge wire, 
it's coming from underneath that heart shape it's going to come up now and over the top of the right hand side of that outer v shape and we're just going to do a little figure of eight weave so coming up through the center and then we're going to wrap three times around that outer v shape now this is where pinching really helps if you recall last week's tutorial we actually employed the use of a ring clamp if you struggle with grip strength on your non-dominant hand that can be quite helpful um, i don't have space on the desk today to bring one in but you absolutely can clamp that into position so what we're looking to do is zigzag back and forth. I've wrapped three times now around the outer wire, which is the V shape. And I'm going to push the leading edge of the finer gauge wire up between those two expanding tram lines. So normally when I'm doing a figure of eight, I'm keeping these two side by side. But what we actually want to do is work towards, let me just grab the piece. We want to work towards those separating from one another and growing in size. So let me just pop that back out of the way and we'll do just a couple of turns on the right hand side before we move up to the top of the piece. So the finer gauge wire has come up the centre here. So what I'm going to do is pinch very firmly and I'm going to wrap three times around the inner, which is the heart shape. So that's one, two and three. You can see I'm just looping that wire around at the top, pull that nice and neat and tidy, and then we're zigzagging from one side to the other. And I'll do two more of those just to show you how that comes together. Now you can scooch that down a little bit because it's got a nice loose grip at the moment. If you need to move things around, you absolutely can. So again, the finer gauge wire is now coming up the centre. I'm going to pinch with my non-dominant hand the frames together. We've got an inner heart shape and an outer V-shape frame. So again, I shall take the tail of the wire up and around. That's one and two and up the center. Give that a squeeze. So we have the appearance of three wraps on the outer. The wire has again, the finer gauge wires come up between those two lines. And then we're going to smooth that over the top and wrap three times on the inner heart. Now, what you can see I've done here is I've pulled that too tight, which is something that's very common because I'm used to creating tram lines. What I want to do is to draw that out a bit. So here's a cheaty hint for you. I'm going to pop the end of my bent chain nose pliers in and I'm just going to force that apart gently. If you're very, very cautious, you've warmed your wire before you started working, you can get away with shenanigans like this. If you are mean to your wire and use it cold, it, it's less likely to do that kind of thing for you. So I'll wrap one more time. The wire has come up the centre, the finer gauge wires come up the centre. I'm going to pinch very firmly and then wrap three times around the outer V shape until my wire pops back up the centre like so tidy those coils and you'll continue until you get up to about here and you'll flip and do the same thing on the other side do we like the word shenanigans it's one of my favorite words my niece's ha uh, my niece had a band called shenanigans once it's very very good fun so if you continue all the way up towards the coils of the heart or the lobes of the heart as I believe they are known what we can move on to is a stage that I prepared earlier on so if I just drop this in slightly different shaped heart but you can see that the process is exactly the same I formed an inner heart and an outer shape and I've just allowed those to coil round so if you want me to I'll just straighten those back out again adding a little bit of heat to your wire will get you a lot of love and respect from your wire uh, sorry I have to go watch the replay I have to drive it's drive safely sweetheart and we'll see you on the replay do take care so what I've got now is as we were making this is a slightly smaller one but I've zigzagged up the one side zigzagged up the other side and down at the base just make it fit as you will it's the same process three wraps on one side three wraps on the other side and you're always dipping and diving so if it comes over the top goes down the center comes around and whooshes off in the opposite direction so this is where we get to the top of the design and what we're going to do is start just warming this around slightly so if you put some heat into your wire you can then do quite magical things with it and it will just kind of want to bend for you so when we get close up to the top we're going to continue with that process of wrapping which is uh, just to show you that you are looking to do the exact same thing. 
and as we start to get towards the top what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this side open and finish this side because it's the exact same process. So we've got a tail here. Now I've truncated this slightly. I've just trimmed the ends away because it's easier for me to demonstrate for you with a, a slightly shorter end to work with. So I'm going to continue with that zigzag weave or that figure of eight or basket weave, however you prefer to know it. And I'm just going to show you that it might get a tad fiddly when you're going around corners, but the process is exactly the same. I'm just going to wrap this side over and out of the way because honestly starting to get on my nerves slightly. So I'm going to continue that zigzag as we come around the curved section. My second favourite word, number one, is conquistador. That is such a brilliant word. I can't actually, uh, I, I can't say that I know exactly what that means to be perfectly honest. I'm not going to, I'm not going to pretend to be smart. <laughs> getting ready for vacation next week says sherry and i'm going to work on my wire working so this tutorial is awesome well i hope that you have fun with it all good news so as i said it does get a slight tad more irritating as you go around the end there but it's perfectly doable now this i left this to show you because i very specifically wanted to show you how achievable this is I'm going to po push that leading edge through and just loop it over the coil we made. So that's one, that's two, loop over the top and three. Again, I am going to tidy those coils up. And as we move towards the centre of the heart, I will add another coil on this side in just a moment. That's one, two and three. So I'm just going to push that down the centre. You will find as you get into your wire working that there are tricks and techniques that you find easier and ways that you might find more challenging. You've just kind of got to find your own way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just warm this heart, outer heart around and imagine that we filled that in with wire so that it lays over the top. Again, I've gone for asymmetry on this one. I may even trim these even more. What I would say is it's always best to start with extra wire more than you need and then you can change your mind as you go. If you start with too short a length of wire it can get a little bit upsetting. So what I'm going to do here is add some nice loopy sections on the centre of the heart as well into which if you wish you can hang other beads as you go through. You'll decide how you want to upgrade this, make it your own. One of the greatest joys being a designer and teaching classes like this is seeing people find the idea, make the idea and then sometimes they run with it and they create something completely different. So I'm just going to put some little loops on the bottom here. As I say you can hang some more crystals or beads or whatever you fancy from there. It's entirely up to you how you personalise this and make it your own. So we've given that a bit of more detail. You can make that slightly more neat if you prefer. And just getting down towards the end what I will do is I'll continue that process so I'm just going to loop the finer gauge wire once and twice and three times just to make my life slightly easier and I'm going to push the tail up through the next section is how we hold everything together so I'm going to do my three wraps because that's what I was planning to do here anyway so you can see I'm looping just around the wire that reaches down here which was the outside V so that's one and two and three push the third one down and through that loops all the way around and then instead of coming back to follow that same pattern and join onto the heart section I'm going to join the two sections together and if you want to do that in the exact same pattern you can so if I'm going to follow that protocol, my finer gauge wire has come up just to the south of this inner loop, like so. And what I will do then is join that one and two and three times around the opposite side before nipping back over to this side, one and two and three, push the wire down and I could finish off there because it's now perfectly safe and joined. We would continue with our zigzag figure of eight 
and scooch all the way around do exactly the same thing where you have space to but because it's not a huge load bearing joint as long as you've got a couple of wraps joining those two sides together all will be well so I'll do one more so you can see what I'm taking is the leading edge of wire and I'm just hoisting that over the surface of sections that I want to join together before bringing that back around that's not very neat is it let's scooch that up one and two and three and I like to keep with the three wraps because it's visible on your design but it's not domineering and it doesn't take forever so what I will do is I'll flip this design over and I will find a nice place to cut away that tail of wire so I've left a very short amount sticking up and the reason for that is it means I can come in with my bent chain nose pliers and just squish that until the cut section is going to sit between these two florally bits, these lovely kind of swirly bits that seem to end up on all of my wire work. And what that means is it's not going to impact, this is the back of the design, there's no scratchy parts to hurt my skin. And if I flip it this way, there's no irritating parts to look unattractive. The best place to end your wire is right in the centre of the design as much as you possibly can. Good to see you. Danielle has joined us live. That's good news. Thank you for popping in. So if you imagine that we've completed that side, what you can see is we've got a large proportion of our work done for this evening's project. So what I'm going to do is show you how to add in one of these butterflies. You get two in the bead pot, which these are an absolute joy. I'll show you how to add on one because it is exactly the same thing but twice and you don't want to see it twice necessarily so what I will do is I'll find a nice gap in the weaving you could have that on the inside on the demonstration piece I lined them up on the outer section now that does give them just a little bit of movement which I think is really charming if you wanted to there's plenty of gaps and apertures in the wings you could also wire through to the other side but I like the fact that they can move just a little bit Let's pop that back out of the way. So I've decided that I'm going to replicate that design and I want the body of my beautiful butterfly to sit along that outer edge like so. So I have a scrap of the 26 gauge wire in my hand, which was on the desk. I can't remember what I cut it off, but I do have it. So there we go. We're always using our scraps. Thank you very, very much, Stephanie. That's jolly decent of you. And thank you also, Sarah. Hello, Rosanna. Good to see you. Ma uh, Maureen is with us as well. Hello. If I've missed anybody, many, many apologies. It's really lovely to see you all. Uh, I'm endeavouring to concentrate on the teaching as much as possible, so forgive me if I have missed you. It is pretty even without the butterflies. This is very, very true. Now the scrap pot comes in handy. Yes, it does, Sarah. Always have your scraps to hand. So I have, it's probably around about six inches. It's more than we need. What I'm going to do is just wrap it three times in a gap. Now, obviously, the gap is larger on the outer edge of that heart. You can squish it into the middle one if you really want to. I quite like it on the outside. So I'm just going to wrap three times around the outer edge and I'm going to show you now a wasteful but fast way of attaching fine gauge wire. So I've wrapped just once around that edge and I'm going to draw that tail all the way through. I'm very firmly holding on to around about half an inch of wire just so. Now I've got my three coils, I'm going to scooch those up and again I want that cut end section to sit inside the frame. So I'm taking, it's very wasteful, taking about a three quarters of an inch away and what I'm going to do is smooth this down to make sure that the end is cut away. What you will find is it's very much easier to use a tail of wire like so when you're attaching a shorter length of the finer gauge wire. Um, obviously I do try at home where possible to ensure that I'm using as much as I possibly can and I discard very very little. So I've got three nice tidy coils. Thank you very very much my darling, that's very very kind. Why are we sorry? Why are we sorry? What are we sorry about? There's nothing to be sorry about. Um, thank you very much for all your kind comments much appreciated so what i will do is you can see i've got my three little coils the finer gauge wire has come on the inside 
of that outer edge. So I'm going to slide the butterfly down, whichever surface you think is more attractive. They're equally beautiful, to be perfectly honest. And what we're going to do is find a gap at the lower part of the body of the butterfly, like so. It will pop out of vision for just a second as it zip lines in. So once that's sat on the framework where I want it to sit, I'm going to grip the left hand wing. Now I'm right dominant. You'll probably want to reflect this if you're left dominant. You'll probably just want to mirror the whole thing. So I'm gripping the wing that I'm not going to be accessing for a second and I'm going to push the tail of my finer gauge wire down on the opposite side of the butterfly's body. And what I'm planning to do is wrap three times around on the lower body. So I need to pull that but if you pull too tight at this stage you'll simply undo your coils and that is not something that we want to happen. Now I want that little loop I've made to be as low down on that body as I possibly can make it be. So you might need to just squish and squeeze to make it sit properly. And then we play the sewing game where we're going to put the end of that finer gauge wire up through the hole in the wing. Now as I say you might need to just squish that a little bit to make it sit down where you want it to. Worst case scenario it goes through the wrong hole and you end up attaching it in a slightly different way. It doesn't really matter. So again, we're going to pull that through, making sure that we're not kinking or looping at the back. I'm going to hold again with my non-dominant hand, push the wire down through the right hand wing. There's a small gap there. Hopefully you'll be able to see this clearly. I've upped the resolution on the cameras and also increase the frame rate, which is all technology last week I had no idea about. So I've slightly crossed those wires over there, which today I'm not going to worry about. Ideally, if you're not doing this on a schedule, what you can do is have three very neat little coils going on the base of the body and then a single one at the top. So what I'm going to do is bring the wire up now inside that outer framework and through the upper section of the left hand wing. Pull that all the way around, again making sure you're not looping anything at the back. So I've gone for two passes around the lower section of the body and then I'm going to take that through the right hand wing, the top aperture, and I might do this twice. I only did it once on the demonstration piece, but that's because I had three wraps at the bottom. So I'm going to come up through the left hand wing again, and it's just like sewing. If you can sew a button on, which I'm sure most of you can do a lot better than I can, tail of the wire goes down through the right hand wing gap, and give that a little bit of a pull until it sits neatly. Then I'm going to switch that around through 90 degrees and wrap three times on the outer edge of the heart pendant. If you can hear any scratching noises, it's the finer gauge wire just going off on a little journey and basically scratching everything on the entire desk. Hello, Judy. How are you, lovely? I hope you are well, sweetheart, as you possibly can be today. So I've wrapped three times around that outer framework. And what I'm going to do is flip the design over. Again, I'm going to cut just a tiny smidge past where I want to finish. So as in uh, the United Kingdom, we would use that as a, like a millimeter. Uh, it's going to be less than a 16th of an inch. And I'm just going to push that tail so that the end sits neatly on the inside of that framework. If I flip that over, hopefully, it looks reasonably neat and you do still have just a little bit of movement. I wouldn't particularly want to sit there and make that move all the time because you will wear wire out in that way, but I like the fact that it moves ever so slightly. So the next part of our process is going to be to make the butterfly section, which is down at the bottom. So that's what we've got to. If you apply those same techniques, you will be able to create this entirety at the top there, which in and of itself, let me just draw that down slightly, in and of itself is a really beautiful piece. Now you can add just a dropper to the bottom, you don't have to have the butterfly, uh, but I was really inspired by the butterflies in the bead pot. So I'm just going to pop this staged demonstration piece out of the way, and then I'm just going to show you the butterfly here real quick like so. 
Now the body is made separately to the wings, so I think we'll make the wings first because that's the slightly trickier part that we're going to need to work with. It's a lot of wire and it can kind of fling things everywhere. As I said, you could just stop at the all heart. The bead mix, darling, is, let me just grab that, this one, the blue raspberry ice pop which has got all of these fabulous things in, including these utterly, utterly gorgeous, really fancy beads. I have no idea what they're called. Fancy beads is what they're called to me. So those are the ones that you will want, if you want to recreate this particular design, that's the project pack that you will need. So if we have a look at creating the butterfly shape outside first, and then I'll show you how to make the body. And the body is based on a dragonfly I've been making for about seven years. So it's really good fun. It takes a little bit of wire warming though. Always warm your wire. <laughs> so let's pop this out of the way for now. And I'll show you what the body looks like without anything else going on just yet. Whilst I grab some extra wire. Let's get that off the reel. Now, let's pop back up to here for a second. So I get my wire on a great big reel because I use ever such a lot of it. And what I tend to do is give that a bit of a smooth as it's coming off the reel. So I'll unspool the amount that I want, which in this case is around about 18 inches. It's quite a lot to work with. So that's nice and warm and also quite straight in the essence that it's smooth obviously that's a curve it's not straight but you know you know what i mean so i'm just going to trim that away and we'll head back down to the board as long as i press the right button so there we go that's actually only about 14 inches which should be enough we're not going to make an absolutely vast butterfly so i've smoothed and warmed the length if you want quite a large piece you may need up to 18 inches if you're happier with a slightly smaller piece then you can size that down i really hope i don't butcher this because i need this in my life it'll be fine it's all good practice the only way anyone ever uh, gets really good at wire work and i'm still on my journey to being that person i'm still learning every single day is by practicing i don't think anybody uh, actually just wakes up able to do it one day <laughs> so that's what we're going to make which looks weirdly like a funny little man with his arms in the air it does it for me anyway so i have my length of wire it this is around 14 to 15 inches and it's been smoothed and warmed beautifully we're going to start in the center again and what i'm going to do to begin with is put just a little dent in it so it's a v shape like so and what we're then going to do is come down away from the v shape now i've made this look harder than it is you could very simply put the bend in first and then bend those away. So what you've got is the centre of your wire has got this little kink in the, in, in the middle bottom. That's much larger than it needs to be, but that's just because I want to overemphasise that shape there. It's quite important in getting the body to sit inside the butterfly. The rest of it I'm going to make quite small. And what I will do is I'll just make one side. Now, when I'm making a butterfly like this, I will do one move at a time on either side. So my first move would be to pop the pliers in underneath and that's just so I can show you and have a very gentle angle coming out to the right before smoothing that down to a bit of a point and at this stage I'll copy onto the other side put the pliers in again and push the wire back up in the first direction so it's going back towards itself now because this was inspired a little bit like a by the swallowtail I'm going to pinch that curved end ever so slightly and then just press down so that it's nice and firmly in in place and then i'm just going to use my thumb to draw that around so every time i do something on the right hand side i will immediately follow that on the left hand side thank you very much melissa says loves the wire heart that's really really cool um, thank you very much for watching and for joining us this evening. It's great to have you here. So it kind of looks like a bit of a funny dodgy leg, which is fine because eventually it will look a bit more like a butterfly. So just opposite where that little bend is, I'm going to push the wire out to the side and make a bit of a flared bulge. So generally speaking, because I, I 
communicate with my wire with the warmth of my body now that sounds really really weird but it's how I work my wire if you want to apply a tool here you absolutely can you could use um, a perfume lid or a lotion lid or the, the pot that your lip balm comes in whatever you want to use uh, you could use the base of your pliers to create that form but I tend to just use the warmth of my hands ask the wire to do the thing and it tends to do the thing so we've got a funny looking bulgy lip leg so far so I'm going to bring the pliers up underneath and what you'll see is it's if you imagine that where we made that first bend you can see the bend in the wire there that's a straight line going directly north so we want to be to the right hand side in the three o'clock position we don't want that to be joining the imaginary line we want it to be over to the right and then what we're going to do is just close that up slightly so that we have that quite tight little form you can take that slightly tighter if you want to what we don't want to do is completely close that up because we might want to tie our wire to that later you don't have to but it's always good to have options now to recreate this particular butterfly I'm going to put the pliers underneath and I'm going to create quite a sharp dramatic bend and to do that I'm going to push that all the way up at 45 degrees before pushing that out and in that way you get quite a defined bend I'm then going to put the pliers up in the top right hand corner I hope that's not too blurry and I'm going to draw the wire over again at around about well, just over 90 degrees before I smooth that round with my thumb and I, because I warmed my wire and made it smooth and pliable I'm going to just allow that to circle around. Roberta says, I hear, I hear a lot of, see a lot of struggles coming my way with this one. It's a beautiful piece to practice your wire working skills. And as I say, if you want to stop with just the heart or the heart and a bar dropper beneath it, it's still going to be a beautiful piece that you can be proud of, especially if you're new to wire work. So go as far as you want to go. There's never any pressure to complete a project. It can all go in the corner marked I experienced, I learnt, I improved. So what we're going to do now is imagine again that this is coming down the central line what I'm going to do is trim this away at that wasted section I've lost my flush cutters they're over here so if I give that a quick snip like so pop that out of the way into the scrap pot what I need to do now is just coil this end up and around now it's tricky to do from underneath so if things go a bit blurry I'm very sorry I still want to bring you projects that are a bit challenging so I'm just going to put a tiny little loop on the end turning that around like so so that that sits on that central imaginary line and if you do that one side and then the other side little by little you'll probably get a much more symmetrical piece than I have there it's not terribly symmetrical to be perfectly honest but I'm not going to worry the next thing that we're going to make is the body of the butterfly so let me just bring that original piece back in have a quick gander at the butterfly body there for a second so you can use basically any beads that you want for this section i've chosen to use four that are the same and then one of the lovely i think it's a lucite heart but you would need to check with sarah or danielle for that i'm not 100 percent certain because i think it makes a really nice decal at the top and it also reflects back the theme that we're working on which was the all heart theme so you can use any beads that you want, but I particularly like how this worked. I'm going to recreate this section with some smaller bicones, just to show you what that would look like with smaller beads, which obviously you can't see because my head is in the way. I'll move that now. <laughs> Disappeared. So that's what I'm going to make the body of our butterfly with. That's coming up right now. So if I pop this piece back out of the way, clang the light hopefully things don't all fall down and I now need another length of that 18 gauge wire so again I'm going to warm that as I unspool it now you need much more than you think you need if you imagine that the body of our butterfly is looking to end up to be about two to two and a half inches in length you'll probably need about three to four times that amount so I'm going to cut away and I'll give this a quick measure that's nine inches of wire I'm working with which should be enough we'll soon find out won't we 
So what I need to do is give that a little bit of a smooth and a warm and we'll see how we get on. So to begin with, what I will do is I'll thread on these bicones, one and two. You can add as many or as few, or you can add mixed beads. It's entirely up to you. I'm just going to slide those down for a second and see if there are any questions. Let's have a quick gander through. Uh, let's have a look. If you do have any questions, please do ask. If I miss them during the live demo, I will pick them up afterwards. But hopefully this is all reasonably explanatory. So I'm going to find a position around about halfway down the wire. Let me just bring the pliers out of the way and pop the butterfly up into the top corner. Now around about halfway along this wire, what I'm going to do is put a right angle bend. Now I will always offer a warning when I'm using beads that may be glass, may be lucite. You need to be respectful when you're working with wire. Uh, because it, there's every possibility and I have cracked many a bead, gemstone or otherwise, in my life. What I'm going to do is that point that we made, which is about halfway along, I'm going to give that some really good strengthening. And I'm opening and closing my bent chain nose pliers, any flat facing pliers will do, and giving that some really good strength. And the reason for that will become apparent any second now. So what I need to do is pinch the bottom bead very, very firmly. That sounded almost rude then. And what I want to do is to add some extra heat to the half of the wire that has no beads on it. So there's beads on the upright, there's no beads on the bit coming out to the right, giving that some really lovely warmth into that wire. Now you could do this one bead at a time if you want, but I happen to be lazy and I just wanted to put them all on in one go. So what we're going to do is pinch that bead really firmly and take the heated wire over the top and spinning that round as I go. Now if you don't add that strength at the bottom, what happens is the wire will bend inside the bead. So add that strength first, pinch and take the tail all the way around and underneath, like so. So we've captured one bead. It does work really nicely with the large beads, but I just wanted you to see the alternatives. So let's just pop that back out of the way for a second. Once I've added that first bend in, you can either alternate as I have done here or come up the same side. I'll show you both techniques. So again, I'm going to pinch the bead very, very firmly and I'm going to take that wire over the top. You do need a little bit of finger strength for this piece. So once I've got that wire coming over the top, I need to pinch to protect the bead, draw that all the way around. So I've got two on the same side, two swooshes of wire on the same side. What you can do. Good evening, Rita. Thank you very much for joining us. Yes, it's an interesting technique, Sarah. It's one that I absolutely adore and I've been teaching dragonflies with this dragonfly body for absolutely donkey's years. So I like them on the same side. If you decided that you wanted them to alternate, as in this demonstration piece, what you'd need to do is pinch and just take that one step further. So you can see now that when I, you need to keep adding some warmth to the wire because it's starting to work really, really hard. So what I'm going to do is bring that all the way around and underneath. So I'm going from top to bottom, top to bottom, and then I'm going to draw that again all the way around, add some heat, and then top to bottom like so. So you can see there's two on the one side, two on the other side. You can alternate, you can do them all on the same side you can do exactly what you want. All I would say is just please to respect your beads and always protect them. I'm using my hands here to protect the beads and ensuring that there's no pressure upwards and downwards. There's gaps here. The beads can still spin. They are under no pressure whatsoever. So what I'm going to do now is finish off this section by wrapping twice with that tail of wire. So that's once and a twice. I'm going to elect which side is the back and trim away. So I've decided that this is the back we're looking at now. Put that in your scrap pot for later. You never know when you're going to need it and just tidy that end away. Again, please don't put any pressure on the beads. The beads do not need any pressure on them. So smoothing my wire up neatly, I'm just going to straighten the body of the butterfly for a second. And then I'm going to pop in that heart bead at the top. As I said before, you can choose whatever beads you want to use 
you don't have to use the same ones all the way along the body it does not matter once we get up to the top I'm just going to do a basic wrapped loop again ensuring that I do not have any place that I'm going to damage the beads so I'm a couple of let's go with very small measurements away from the top of that bead before I put a right angle bend in pop in with those round nose pliers turn that all the way around draw the tail so you've got a nice round shape I do have basic tutorials on my YouTube channel for such things as creating wrapped loops. If you ever feel that you need to refresh that and you're not seeing it enough in the Jesse James live tutorials, then you can always check back on those. So what I'm going to do is pinch very firmly with my pliers on that looped section, not where the wires cross over. I'm just going to wrap that around a couple of times refreshing my memory with which is the back this is the back so that's where I'm going to cut away always check twice and cut once in case you cut the wrong bit which can be quite sad so squish and a squeeze to get that nice and neat and tidy and you've got the butterfly body now the head will spin but never mind <laughs> life isn't always perfect so we've got the body of the butterfly and you can see where we made that original notch down at the very beginning of the butterfly technique we're going to lay this over the top so you can see that it would be quite easy to find places to tie this all together so with the tying together, I'm just going to grab a scrap. This is only about five inches, which probably isn't quite enough. But in terms of the technique of tying everything together, uh, it's probably enough to just demonstrate the technique. Uh, Sarah says, even if you didn't want to do the butterfly, just this dangle would be neat. Absolutely. I use this all the time in so many, many, many designs. It's a wonderful technique to master. If you take it down from 18 gauge to 20 gauge, it's so much easier. Enjoy. What you will find if you make it with 20 gauge is that you don't have the resilience. And I actually wanted there to be a rigidity to it so it's entirely up to you practice in your 20 gauge make in your 18 gauge so what I'm going to do is choose that little place where we initially started ah oh, welcome Marie it's lovely to have your company thank you for joining us and giving us a go this is where we started the tutorial for the butterfly that bendy section so I'm going to wrap around one side of that a good three to four times as many as I can fit would be ideal but in terms of demonstrating I'm just going to do that maybe three times because it's quite dull to watch me do the same thing over and over again so you would probably be better with new wire rather than me using this recycled bit which is a little bit tense a little bit tight so I've wrapped that around three times trimming away with just a little extra space why I did not want to come off the cutters and then just smoothing that end around so that it's neat and tidy and the end happens inside the frame of the design and not on the back not on the front so you can see I've put the butterfly body back into the upright position which sounds like an airline tutorial instead of a jewellery tutorial now what I'm going to do is lay the butterfly body uh, sorry central section over the wing section so really this is entirely up to you with how precise you want to be what I'm going to do is take it over I've got my fine gauge wire attached to the wing frame I'm going to take it over the top of the central body and just loop that around the back and what I will do is just chase that up the body of the design just push it down until it sits where you want it to so I've looped that twice around the bottom what I'm going to do now is I'll probably bring the finer gauge wire on the opposite side to where the heavy gauge wire sits so I'm just going to sit that on the side of the bicone push it around underneath and then draw that all the way around again up and over so that if it is visible it looks like I've wrapped it opposite on purpose now when you get up into the center you may have the wing splits too far apart to join on as it happens mine are quite close together uh, so if I felt that I wanted to add extra security I could very simply just pass that around both of those wings and that kind of ties everything together 
open out those top wings if they come out of shape for you and continue with your finer gauge wire up and around the body. Now there's two loops at the back, they're really there to enable you to tie everything together. So the next section is a tiny bit tricky, it's not difficult, it's tricky to show you. So what I want to do is pass the end of my wire at least once through both of those loops that we made in the top of the wings. So if I take that tail and pull that nice and tight, that is now tied and secured together. I'm going to finish off by wrapping a couple of times around the neck section between the main beads and the heart shape before I bring that just over the back and I think just to make things nice and tidy I'm just going to squeeze that up slightly and take that tail around one side of the wings behind that heart shaped head so that's once and twice at least three times to make that neat and tidy. The issue here is um, the distance from my nose and having the camera in the way. So again, what we're going to do is trim just a tiny section past where it passes the back. Always police your little bits and offcuts so they don't go on the floor. And then just chase that tiny end section away so you've got your little butterfly decal. It's obviously not quite as neat or as grand as the first one that I made, but it is indeed there. So a big thank you to everyone who's joined us so far. Oh, thank you very much, Maureen. That's lovely. Good to have your company, all of you. So the looping section just at the bottom, what we're going to do is if I bring back in the piece I made to begin with, imagining again that we filled all this in, we have our two sections. Now you could very, very simply just pop a jump ring through those uh, Sherry says, Gem, you're a genius with wire. Thank you for your sharing. Maria says, beautiful. I'm very grateful to you both. Thank you for such lovely, warm and welcoming comments. I appreciate them hugely. So you can very simply add a jump ring in there. And if you need to change the orientation of your loop above the butterfly's head, because we always warm our wire first, you've got one chance to just twist that round sideways. So now a jump ring can join those super easily. My YouTube page is, I can't remember, I think it's Gem Hawks Jewellery, question mark, don't know. I will drop a link in for you in the very near future. I don't have that open right now. Sarah might know, possibly. So you can very, very simply pop in a jump ring and just put those two pieces together or you can add in a spacer bar of your very own. So I've randomly selected some absolutely glorious beads from our kit that we're working with today, which is the Blue Raspberry Ice Pop. So many beauties to choose from. Uh, these are absolutely stunning. Well, the whole lot's beautiful. The colorway is genius. The varieties of blue in one tub are so complementary to one another. So I'm going to show you quickly just with a single bead how to start off this bar section. Let me pop these out of the way. So I have a scrap of the 18 gauge round copper wire just here. I'm going to pop on a bead. Now either side of your beads you will want around about an inch of excess wire. So obviously there's far too much here but it's just to show you how to create the loops that we need to create this drop section, the joining section. So around about an inch from the end I'm going to pop a right angle bend on and around about an inch from the other end I'm going to pop a right angle bend on. Now because I'm going from flat connector to flat connector I want these in the same orientation so right angle one side right angle the other side but they're both in the same orientation rather than having one coming up at 90 degrees, they're 180 degrees from one another. I hope that makes a lot of sense because it's supposed to. So we filled this section all bar, and let me just show you here. I'm allowing a gap of around about a spacer bead. Let me see if there's one in here that's the right kind of space. Yeah, the tiny pale blue faceted ones see if I can get one of those out without dropping absolutely everything on the floor. One of these, that is the kind of distance you would want at either end of your collection of beads. So you have an imaginary 
tiny bead at the end before you turn the loop. So if I turn a loop just like so, round nose pliers in, I'll try to turn, show you from this angle, maybe that will work. Take the tail all the way around so you get that little loop shape, you could centralise it like so. And the same on the other end, but you've added as many beads or as few beads as you want for your spacer drop. So we're going to use that to connect these two pieces together. So I hope that all makes a lot of sense. Ah, oh, that's amazing. Thank you so much, Sarah. Very helpful. I appreciate it because I don't have the hot cut with me right now. So what you can see is we've added a spacer bar with a loop on either end. Now, these aren't closed up just yet. But what I'm going to do is show you how to open that up exactly the same as if you were opening a jump ring you can now see there's some air space in between and what we're going to do is add the butterfly on by pushing the loop above the butterfly's heart shaped head and allowing that to slide into position before closing that loop up now because i warmed my wire before i did anything i can close that up by hand which is magic if you're brutal with your wire Frankly, it will be brutal back to you. So what I'm doing here is I'm supporting the loop. I am not touching the circle at the top of the butterfly and I am not touching where the tail of wire is crossing over the central core of wire. It's key that you don't squeeze those positions. We're looking to have this just across the very center of the loop shape. So I'm going to take that tail all the way around at least one time and a half. I'm just going to tidy that section up. So we know that we're now connected. This is now a permanent cold connection. We didn't have to solder or anything. So what I'm going to do is flip this over for a moment and open up the other loop exactly as if it's a jump ring so you get the gap. What I want to do is make sure that this goes on the same face that I want it to. So I will flip the butterfly. This is the underside of the butterfly, okay? This is the upper side of the pendant. I'm going to slide the tail of the loop I've just opened through that hole. And what will happen is it will flip over so that you've got the face of the butterfly and the face of your heart pendant. If you want those to both be facing the same way, I mean, you can always cheat and just add jump rings, but I wanted to show you this really cool bar addition technique. So again, what you will need to do with that tail of wire knocking everything flying as it goes is support just the central section of the loop. So again, we're not squishing the heart, we're not touching down on the core and the crossover. I'm going to take that tail all the way around like so, one and a half times. Tidy that up so it's nice and neat. And at this stage, we can assess how many more turns of wire we can get on that bar extender. So I think we can probably get another complete turn on both ends. Again, always being respectful that we're not crushing or harming our beads. So, oops, sorry about the wobbles there. Many apologies if any of you got seasick from that. So I'm taking that tail around and trying to keep the coil neat. Pull that around for a second time. Assess where the back of your design is. Actually, that looks really neat on both sides. So if I flip that over for a second, this is the back of the design. I'm going to trim away any excess of wire. Again, look twice, cut once, and then just tidy that coil down neatly so that you don't have any jagged parts sticking out. And you'll do exactly the same at the other end. Trying to keep the same number of coils just makes it look like you tried just makes it look like you put a bit of thought into it. If you get three coils at the top and two coils at the bottom, it doesn't really matter. But you will end up with a, a, a greater sense of symmetry and perfection if you're able to say, well, yes, there's the same number here as there is there. So I'm just going to flip over to the back and trim away the excess. Very, very carefully ensuring that I'm only cutting the wire that I want to cut, like so. Pop that in the scrap pot. That will probably be for melting rather than reuse. It was very tiny. And then again, it's just a case of finding that end and giving it a gentle squeeze, watching out that you're not hurting any of your beautiful beads. 
So that is the nuts and bolts of your project. You can add a pinch bail at the top, or if you prefer, you can just wire on a little coil. I've lost the piece of jewellery. Here it is. So what I've done to add on at the top is exactly the same technique as we've just used to create this bar extender. It's exactly the same technique, but the loop at the top is larger. And instead of trimming away the wire at the back, I slammed a coil on the front. So it is exactly the same technique repeated. So you've added in with a wrapped loop and there's a wrapped loop at the top. So I hope that you have enjoyed these. Let me just pop back over here and stick myself in the bottom corner for a moment. <laughs> uh, Sandra says, thanks for a great presentation. Butterflies are my favourite. So I hope that I haven't completely massacred butterflies for you then because I am not, um, oh gosh, I should know what a butterfly person's called. A lepidopterist, I think. Uh, Roberta says, so very pretty. Oh, bless you. Thank you ever so much. Sandy says, beautiful. Emily says, love it. You're all very, very kind. And thank you so much for that. If you do have any further questions at all, please don't hesitate to ask. Drop me a message on this video stream and I will endeavour to respond to it as soon as I can. Bearing in mind that uh, UK time is slightly different to possibly where you are in the world. I'm about five hours ahead of Eastern Standard. And after that, I really don't know. So <laughs> I hope that you've enjoyed the all heart butterfly drop pendant tutorial. And I hope that you'll invite me back again for another live in the future. As I said, any questions at all, please just give me a shout. And again, thank you very, very much for having me. Are there any questions immediately? Bearing in mind there's a 10 second delay between me talking and you hearing. <laughs> Uh, Shelley says, I missed the first part, but this looks great. Maria says, great, Jim. Thank you ever so much. Emily says, thank you. Donna says, thank you. You're all so lovely. Thank you for having me. Sarah says, thanks, Jim, which is absolutely fabulous. I'm going to sign off for now, but I can be around in the comments for a little while if there are any questions at all. Thank you ever so much again for having me, and I look forward to seeing you soon. So all hearts. Mwah, lots of love and I'll catch with you uh, again hopefully next week take care bye